And another thing that's pretty interesting is that they also checked which transformations made the most important uh, were most important, and found that ro rotation and shearing translation were best associated with an increase in validation accuracy. Welcome to the first paper review video of this channel. And uh, in this one, I've read Rand Augment, uh, Practical Automated Data Augmentation with a redu Reduced Search Space. So why this paper is so interesting uh, is uh, that, you know, that it has this reduced search space. So there are previous automated data augmentation methods. For example, one is Auto Augment, but this the, the it just had so many hyperparameters that that uh, this paper shows um, all kinds of issues with. Um, and so uh, let's go through it and uh, I think we'll learn a lot from it. So what they say in the beginning is that, you know, recent work has shown that data augmentation has the potential to significantly improve the generalization of deep learning models. And I think this is something that we all uh, know. And, uh, you know, this, you know, to, to, to take this idea further, we should really have some sort of um, automated augmentation method. So my question to you is, how do you normally, or how do you currently do data augmentation? Um, if you're like me, then you, uh, you would most likely just use some random cropping with some horizontal flip and maybe some color jitter and stuff like that. And hopefully after reading this paper, uh, most people will start doing uh, using these kinds of uh, policies for, for their data augmentation. All right, but anyways, so automated augmentation policies uh, are often found by training small models on small data sets and subsequently applied to train larger models. In this, in this work, we remove both of these obstacles. And so, as I mentioned, previous um, data policies, data augmentation policies, um, had so many hyperparameters that they had to be trained on very small models, and then those hyperparameters found uh, would then be taken to to a larger model, um, and and then they'll we'll go through the paper. So what they mention here, anyways, is that Rand Augment achieves 85% um, accuracy on ImageNet, which is 0.6% uh, increase over previous state of the art, and 1% higher over baseline augmentation. And here we can see a comparison to some different data augmentation policies. And the ones that are perhaps most important here are auto augment, where, where you can see sort of the search space is much, much greater than rand augment. But the uh, the performance of it on, on these various data sets are pretty much on the same level. And the conclusion here is that rand augment matches or exceeds um, you know, the performance of other augmentation methods. So uh, as the introduction, uh, they kind of talk about how data augmentation is, you know, to design good data augmentation is um, can be quite tricky because it's dependent on domain knowledge and so on. So having some learning policies that, um, they mentioned that learning policies for data augmentation has recently emerged as a method to automate the design of, auto, of augmentation strategies. Um, but they go, go on to, to mention that the computational requirements, as well as the added complexity of two separate optimization procedures uh, can be prohibitive. Uh, prohibitive. So, so why it is prohibitive is, as they mentioned here, that the original formulation for automated data augmentation, um, where they had a separate search on a small proxy task, and then those results can be transferred to a larger target task. And so this this formulation uh, makes a strong assumption that that the the proxy task, you know, in this case of of finding the optimal uh, hyperparameters for the data augmentation policy, actually transfers to to uh, to lar to the larger task of training the larger model on a larger data set. And uh, in you know, in this case, they provide experimental evidence to challenge this this assumption. And they also show that augmentation depends strongly on the model and data set size in perhaps ways that, that is not um, very intuitive and in, uh, at least at least how I found it in the beginning. So uh, what they do is that in order to remove that, that separate search for finding the hyperparameters for the policy, 
uh, what is necessary is to reduce the search space. So their contributions um, summarized is that they find that the optimal data augmentation strength depends on model size and training set size, and that they introduced this um, vastly simplified um, data augmentation method. And lastly, that they, of course, also demonstrate these state-of-the-art uh, results. So I'm just skipping to what I feel are the important parts. So here is actually where they explain the, the, the algorithm for Rand Augment, which is surprisingly simple. Uh, they have two hyperparameters, just two. So the first is N, and then the second is M. And so N here uh, just describes how many transforms they want to do sequentially. So let's say N is uh, two, for example. Then what they'll do is they'll choose um, two transforms to do out of a transform list that they have. So, you know, for example, let's just say that would be this auto contrast, and perhaps it would be this uh, translate X. So th that's what's chosen from this N, uh, and then those two are just chosen randomly. Then the second hyperparameter M is the magnitude that we want to apply these transformations. So perhaps you can do this auto contrast on, on a scale of, uh, of different magnitudes. And so those two are the, are the hyperparameters. And then finally, the, the algorithm is just that they do, you know, it's just two lines. Uh, they first choose uh, the operations, the transformations that they want to do, dependent on this value n, and then they return that operation with the given magnitude value of m. And that's it. So uh, we can see some examples here where they have chosen uh, also n equal to 2, and the first one just happened to be shear and then auto contrast. And then they demonstrate how that looks like for different magnitudes. So here, having a magnitude of, of nine means that they have, you know, a larger, uh, a smaller rather, um, the augmentation strength, and then a larger, you know, a larger augmentation. So the paper here mentions that population-based augmentation uh, (PBA) found that the optimal magnitude uh, magnitude of augmentation actually increased during the course of training. And so that inspired them to, um, to search over, opt uh, to not search over optimal magnitudes for each transformation, but rather just have a fixed magnitude scale. And in that way, they also, of course, reduce that search space, which, which this paper is all about. So, um, you know, in order to reduce the, the parameter space, they also re uh, re replace the learning policies and probabilities uh, for each transformation with a parameter-free procedure of always selecting a transformation with uniform probability 1 over k. And of course, we can imagine that this is not the optimal way of doing things because perhaps some of these, um, you know, perhaps um, sharing for some tasks are much more important than sharpness. And so uh, they actually bring up some ideas later on in the paper for how to they might do this differently. But anyways, this is all because they want to reduce uh, the search space. And then they also go on to say that in order to reduce the parameter space further, uh, they you know have a single global distortion M and that they may, may and that that may suffice for parameterizing all transformations. Um, and you know so we looked at the resulting algorithm. It just contains two parameters, N and M, and can be expressed in two lines of Python code. And uh, they also mentioned that both parameters are human interpret interpretable, such that large values of N and M uh, increase the regularization strength, which is uh, pretty nice to have that intuitive uh, understanding. Um, and then also that given that it's a very small search space over just those two hyperparameters, they can do a sort of a naive grid, grid search and that, that they find that to be quite uh, effective. And so for the results for the paper, they continue to sort of um, uh, challenge the hypothesis that that uh, finding the, the policy, the hyperparameters for a small proxy task, that it is applied, uh, uh, that that is appropriate for then extending that to, to a larger uh, task. And so if we scroll down a little bit, we can see here that if we look at the bottom right graph, 
we can see that the optimal distortion magnitude actually increases uh, as we increase the training set size, which perhaps is not you know, intuitive at first. You would imagine that uh, it would be more important to have more data augmentation for small data set sizes, but uh, they show the opposite, which is quite interesting. And then in this graph right here, uh, they show that the you know ha the the blue one here represents having a data set size of uh, 1000 examples and then the purple 4000 and the red one 10000 they show that um, having a small data set size they can actually improve the accuracy more than if they would have more data set uh, a larger data set so um, you know essentially the conclusion there is that uh, data augmentation is more effective the smaller data set you have and for sort of the, the bottom left graph is that as you increase the model size, uh, the optimal distortion magnitude also increases. So I found that to be interesting as well. So if we scroll down, then they mentioned that, you know, this, uh, this disagrees with the expectation that smaller data set requires stronger regularization. And then they have an, an hypothesis for this counterintuitive behavior is that aggressive data augmentation leads to a low signal to noise ratio in small data set. So essentially that the model is adapting to noise rather than, than learning the inherent structure of, of, the, of the data. But you know, regardless, this highlights um, what they wanted to demonstrate, which is that there are shortcomings of, uh, of having uh, learned a, a data augmentation policy on a proxy task comprised of a subset and even a subset of the model and then extending that to a larger model. And uh, if we continue to scroll down here, they show the results on Cypher 10 and how they got those results. But I'm just going to scroll down and uh, the conclusion here is that Rand Augment achieves state-of-the-art results. And uh, I'm not going to go through this too much either. But just say that in this last part here, they discuss some ideas of uh, how they can have a learned probability of selecting image, tra image transformations rather than having this, this fixed probability uh, that they had. And another thing that's pretty interesting is that they also checked which transformations made the most important, uh, were most important and found that ro rotation and shearing translation were best associated with an increase in validation accuracy. And actually that some of them like solarize and posterize actually decreased validation accuracy which is uh, quite interesting all right so that was sort of a, a summary and some thoughts and then walk through of the rand augment paper um, let me know what you think of this paper review and if you want more of these types of videos um, thanks anyways for watching and i hope to see you in the next video